I'm Sophia A. Jackson, and I'm the editor and founder of Aphrodisiac Theatre News. And today I'm joined by Nancy Medina, <laughs> and um, I'm new artistic director at the Bristol Vic. <laughs> and where are you joining me from today for this interview? Uh, so I'm in London at the moment. I'm in choir boy rehearsals. Okay, thank you. Um, so to start, could you tell us a bit more about Choir Boy? Uh, so Choir Boy is a play by Terrell Alvin McCraney, who uh, famously wrote um, a play that then became a film, Moonlight, uh, which won the Academy Award a few years back. Um, he also did Brother Size, which was on at the Young Vic and Wig Out and lots of really got the moment and um, Choir Boy takes place in a elite all boys uh, black boys school in America. And it really is a yeah growing pains kind of story. It's just about boys becoming men and all of the different things that they're going through and thinking about. And there is a, a real sense of trying to understand who they are as black men, who they are in their spirituality, who they are just in their identity and personalities. It's all the things that we all go through when we're growing up, but specifically uh, for black boys. <laughs> and um, you're directing it as well, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how have you, what have you added to the production as the director? Um, at the moment, it's really uh, just honoring uh, the musicality in Terrell's work. It's finding that rhythm. It's helping the ca uh, the actors understand their characters and where their characters are from and why they're speaking in the way that they're speaking. There's such musicality in, in the way that Terrell writes. But also there's a heck of a lot of music. A third of the play is mm -hmm. spirituals and gospel music. So it's also... Uh, doing a lot of music calls and we've got movement calls and <laughs> it's busy it's busy at the moment it does but, sound um, busy <laughs> but but it's one of those plays where it's all about character and their relationships so you don't want to mess with it too much like you don't need to mess with it you just have to honor the good writing and then like yeah let 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 those relationships breathe I'm a really big fan of um Terrell Alvin McCraney is he coming over <laughs> I believe so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's been yeah. joining us um, uh, over Zoom uh, for Aww, rehearsals. That, we'll be joining us again this week. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure I saw Choir Boy at the Royal Court um, many, many moons ago. Um, and are you also working on Cheeky Little Brown? Uh, so I'm not. Uh, we're producing it. We're co-producing Cheeky Little Brown as Bristol Vic with yeah. Theatre Fawcett and uh, Belgrade Coventry, but Chino Odimba is directing Cheeky Little Brown. Yeah. And how did that collaboration come about? Um, we've been talking with Teatro Fawcett for a while about different titles and what we can uh, yeah, do together. And uh, Chino is really interested in Cheeky Little Brown and I had a read of it and I just loved it. I really fell in love with it. I fell in love with the main character lady and the journey that she takes us on because again, it's, it's a real kind of growing up story and how we start reevaluating our friendships and what is love and self-love and it's just really messy it's messy in the <laughs> best ways because it's yeah. funny it's human and it, and I think sometimes as an audience we need that right we need somebody else to be embarrassing and humiliate themselves so we can tap into those moments that we got <laughs> yeah. away from that we did <laughs> <laughs> yeah and cheeky just really allows you to do that and and you know the actress tiana is just so charming as well like you really kind of like fall in love with her and and you're following the story the writing is fantastic it's really funny um and it just moves about a lot and um i fell in love with the play and i said why don't we do this and we were talking a lot at the brisovic around how do we support new writers and how do we um become more active around audience development especially around black and brown audiences yeah and it feels like it feels like an issue that's not just ours but always is that oh that show was on oh gosh i missed it so like things are on for a few nights or only on for a week and then like as soon as like word of mouth can start the show is gone and move, moving on mm -hmm. so we thought well let's just do it um it's one of the most difficult financial times for theater at the moment but we're yeah. like nope, we're gonna it three weeks 
Okay. Give it up. Wow. Hopefully allows us to have a much more meaningful relationship with the artist, with Tiata themselves, but also the writer, also the performer, but also allows that company and that show to really build an audience in Bristol and also understand like how the work is being received, uh, having a longer run. So we're trying to do a few more things like that uh, within the year. So this is the first season that you've programmed as artistic director. How has that process been? It's been good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Some of it was absolutely curated and some of it was happy accidents. But like, we, <laughs> you know, like sometimes you have to slot things in like, oh, that works, that works, that works. But all all of the plays have like this um, this uh, connecting theme around belonging okay. and collectivism versus individualism. And even the serious ones still have this element of laughter and joy, which is exactly like what I wanted as a kind of like, what's the first invitation that, you know, we're making as Bristol Vic in the direction that we're going to. And for me, you know, COVID pandemic has been hard. You know what? I want a good laugh. I also want to think, I want to reflect, I want to feel emotions. I want to be able to I'll be engaged intellectually, but I also sort of want to feel like I'm communing with my fellow audience members again. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really important. And, and and it just it just worked out that, you know, we had these amazing plays that we were able to program that all sort of connect thematically, but are very different sometimes in style, um, but are sort of speaking to our general human humanness. And which play are you most looking forward to? My own play, of course. Choir Boy! <laughs> That <laughs> I'm saying that because I'm in the middle of like the most joyous rehearsal period right now. Yeah. I, love cast, I love my team. Like there's just so much laughter and dancing going on. It's great. Um, but besides my own play, uh, definitely looking forward to Cheeky Little Brown. Uh, really looking forward to Arabian Nights as well because okay. it's um it's like this uh, um, um Shauna Lee's take on it. It's so uh, sisterly, feminist, okay. on the world vibe. And I'm very excited about that as well. So apart from the fun things, what are the challenges of being an artistic director? Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Sorry, can I just hear that again? What are the, ch- apart from the fun bits, what are the challenges of being an artistic director? Yeah, so let me be clear. The fun bits are working on the art. The fun yeah. bits are supporting the and and dramaturgy and all of that that is the fun bit and meeting artists all of it uh the challenging bits um are the finances at the moment um, yeah and they're not just uh specific to us it's mm. you know what's happening across the board throughout the nation yeah throughout the world. economically it's cost of living crisis yeah it's needing to balance out that people need to get paid but they should get paid um, and that the variables are just really difficult. So that's a big challenge at the moment. And to mm-hmm. and to stay positive about it, to be honest, like I think a lot of people want to be doom and gloom. And, yeah. and there is, there's a reality of the doom and gloom, but also like it's a challenge. Like how can we be innovative and think about it? And I think the other personal challenge for me mm-hmm. has been um, going from a freelance theater director and what my relationship is uh, to well, especially with my work around social justice and activism and my personal relationship to the city I live in, which is Bristol, and now having to think about it from an organizational point of view, mm-hmm. that's been an interesting shift for me. Um, and, and a good challenge, actually, because it just broadens out. You know, I, I've always thought that the stuff I do is like little A activism rather than big <laughs> A and now I feel like I can step into more of the big A activism because I'm having conversations with the city in a way that I just would have never had as an individual. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's a good challenge, but I'm still navigating that and, and finding my footing. Yeah. So you said you're still navigating that. So who did you look to for inspiration or guidance when you took on the role? Um, At the moment... <laughs> Um, lots of my colleagues I have really good conversations with who are leaders in their own rights. And uh, and to be honest, like a lot of black and brown women, because there's uh, there's no need for translation 
Yeah. It's like there is an understanding. Ah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're in step two now. So let's talk about this thing that's happening, which is great. Um, but Indu from the Kiln has been uh, such an amazing uh, big sister in the industry for me. That's She's exactly really what um, Chino said as well, actually. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she did. Yeah. <laughs> Up to Indu. <laughs> <laughs> She's good people. She's such good people. Um, but you know, you got writers like Juliet Gilkes Romero as well. And mm -hmm. like there's just so many, there's so many good women out there working in theater right now that are really supporting. That's uh, nice to hear. But but you need it. You need it. Cause I I I, I mm -hmm. yeah, I think um there are questions around black leadership at the moment. And right push back to black leadership okay and I think you need your people to talk these things through yeah um you need and to know that you're not alone <laughs> yeah that makes sense and so what um although you're new to the role what tips would you give to anyone who wants to be an artistic director uh find your grounding um like yeah ground yourself uh I had yeah I was really really lucky so I had a trip so my family's from the Dominican Republic mm -hmm. and uh, I had a trip to go out there from mid-December to mid-March and to do research on carnival and theater. And my mom went out there and I took my, my husband and my kids and it was so good to sort of like be back with my ancestors and it was a very complicated identity, belonging, all of those questions. But it like really rooted me mm -hmm. in the best ways that I sort of needed to be rooted. And then I came back to start Versovic full time. And I'm just so glad that I had that because I could have easily been overwhelmed by the pace of that organization. Because it's an organization and you got to remember these things. Yeah. Like we do things in that organization, but it's a business. And you know, there are profit margins and lines to be met and it's a business. Um, so I would say like, yeah, ground yourself in whatever way you can, because I felt so calm and so rooted and able to just be there and say, OK, I need to think about that. I need to listen in this moment rather than feel the pressure of having to come up with an answer. Yeah. Um, and and also just remind myself that I can be the leader I've always been. And not have to change because <laughs> um, I'm I'm a listener. Um, yeah. So yeah, ground grounding yourself. Yeah, just making sure that you feel steady. I think it's really important. And finding a support system. Um, mm -hmm. And finally, what does a typical day look like for an artistic director? Well, for you. <laughs> Uh, so I've been trying to shift it. So when I first started, it was like meeting after meeting after meeting. And you're going from production meeting into maybe meeting with an artist or meeting with, you know, something to do with the board or finance or like there's just so many meetings. And now I've, I'm, I'm making space because my, my, my brain can't work that way. So I'm trying to sort of organize my week a bit where there are meetings happening at certain times. And then there are certain afternoons that are just about meeting artists. And um, then there are certain days where you're sitting in on a reading or a workshop or you're involved in this R&D. Uh, so it varies quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It varies quite a lot. But I'm, I'm trying to find my balance of not just going from one thing to the next because it's very different things that you're going to. Uh, constantly like every meeting has its 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 own um lens and perspective that you need to have on it and be right. thinking on and my brain doesn't always work that quickly <laughs> that's, that's fair enough um yeah. well good luck with it all and uh I, hopefully i get to come to bristol Elvic and see one of your shows that would be good oh please come see choir boy it's gonna be so good <laughs> i will i will i think that's that's probably the one that i'll come and see i'll probably see oh. keith cheeky little brown somewhere else um but yeah mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time no thank you so much Sylvia. bye take care bye